I should read the Johnny Lawrence story on the air. That'd be a nice little segment for the show. Uh, Bill, can you get online there? Can you get me online and click on my website? I'll just read the uh, Johnny Lawrence story to you guys. In dulcet tones, it'll be like a uh, book on tape. And right. then you can you can edit it and put music behind it. Yeah, excellent. As a matter of fact, get, we'll, the, uh, get the Karate Kid soundtrack and put one of those songs behind it. Matter, well, yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, you know who Johnny Lawrence is, right? Uh, yes, vaguely. The character? Yeah. From the Karate Kid movies, the uh, bully? Yeah, the okay. macho. Okay. All right, we got it. Go ahead. Johnny Lawrence owned the universe in 1984. The universe was, to him, the wealthier part of the San Fernando Valley, and not that shithole Reseda. But it was his first, and he hoped, last horizon. High school was a non-stop carnival of Cobra Kai karate class, make-out sessions with Allie, his hottie girlfriend, and doled-out skull bashings to any spindly nerd crossing his swaggering path. But his universe flickered senior year. First, Allie dumped him. Then... A skinny, olive-skinned New Jersey asshole named Daniel LaRusso appeared. Worse, it looked like he and Allie were flirting, hooking up, right in front of him. He and his Cobra Kai buddies tuned up LaRusso as best they could. At first on the beach, and then a nighttime knuckle session outside the high school's Halloween dance. Johnny had been smoking some righteous ging, and for a second, felt like he might actually be able to kill Daniel. Hadn't his Cobra Kai instructor always said, an enemy deserves no mercy? There were times when he was deeply stoned that Johnny wished he were a cobra. And hadn't his father always admonished, I will move you so far the fuck away from this town if I ever see you back down from someone smaller than you? The old man with his gray hair, bulgy eyes, and pot belly, holding sway over a car wash empire that made him a multimillionaire. Johnny loved, feared, and hated him. So Johnny fed his father an elaborate lie about being jumped by eight Mexicans when he and his crew were stopped mid-thrash by LaRusso's only friend, a pudgy, sawed-off Asian maintenance man. But that maintenance man was the last thing to go wrong for Johnny that year. He took LaRusso out to a junkyard and imparted some kind of ancient Chinese ass-kicking secret to the goddamn shrimp, and in the end, it took only a single crane kick to shatter Johnny's San Fernando universe. His father, sickened and mortified, immediately moved Johnny to a new school, forcing him to finish his senior year under the name of Greg Tolan. He also forbade Johnny to practice any martial arts. Heartbroken, but paralyzed for fear of his father, Greg took to mindlessly hoisting cafeteria tables, taking a perverse thrill in seeing people and food spilled into the ground. What was this new sexual charge he felt? He was a bad boy making a big messy poo, and seeing things splash and make a stainy wainy made him want to be punished, paddled, and humiliated. He didn't like thinking too deeply about it, but he was happy. For a while, because sure enough, another skinny, olive-skinned boy hove into view. He even looked like Daniel LaRusso, even though he dressed like Elvis Costello. This new kid seemed more delicate, feminine. What were these feelings? It was too much for Greg. At a beach dance, another fight on, on, on another beach, he threw the Daniel LaRusso lookalike into the ocean. But his satisfaction was short-lived. The new kid's wigger friend knocked Greg unconscious with a single punch. Back home, Johnny's father was apoplectic. He packed Johnny off to college, where he went under the name of Chaz. The smell of the sea haunted him, and he quickly took up diving as a sport. Splashing into the water over and over again, Diving headfirst into oblivion like he'd always wanted to. But god damn it, he was another third olive skinned, dark haired little wimp in his life. Was his life ever to be free of geeky shrimps? This one didn't even give Johnny the courtesy of beating the shit out of him. He simply took his girlfriend away like it was the third act of some badly written comedy where the writer simply needed the little shrimp to hook up with the impossibly hot older girl. It made no goddamn sense. And then, as if the gods had become tired of pissing on him and decided to start shitting, the shrimp's gray-haired father, the spitting image of Johnny's own dad, defeated him in the diving finals, doing a ridiculous dive called the Triple Lindy. It was as if his own father had fin finally, publicly, rejected his spawn, painting Johnny's defeat in the sky in a series of mid-air somersaults. Johnny dropped out of college and drifted to Los Angeles. He wandered into a pawn shop to see if there was an old karate gi he could buy. The burly man behind the counter told him he might have something in the basement. Johnny followed him, 
not even hearing the whistle of air as the leather sap crashed against his skull and his world turned black. They cut out his tongue and dressed him in zippered leather, making him look like a mutant cobra. They sodomized the memory of every olive-skinned, dark-haired shrimp from his mind forever, and for that, he was grateful. The store owner and his mascarid security guard friend, light years away from his distinguished, hated father. When they woke him up to watch over their newest prey, a bald, intense boxer who they left tied up while they partied with his gangster buddy, he was no longer Johnny Lawrence or Greg Tolan or even Chaz. He was the geek. His life consisted of his box, the protein shakes they fed him through a straw, blaring 50s rock and roll, and his monthly handy white bath. That's why he started screaming tongueless when the bald boxer worked himself out of his straps and made his escape. And when the boxer sent a crashing right hand into the geek's melon, Johnny's last thought was, Thanks to the laughing gods that at least it wasn't a goddamn crane kick. Thank you. Ah, yeah, we turned the mics down so we wouldn't hear any laughter over it. Like on those morning shows, you know. Exactly. Great. We're going to the sound effects. Ding, 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 ding. Right. I'm going to produce that. I really am. Yeah. Patton Oswald, thank you so much for spending your time with Guys, us. Guys, thanks for having me on.